Good evening, everyone. This is Robert Stevenson. Um, it is 531 on the uh, 2nd of May. I'm going to call to order the uh, meeting of South of Colin Granville Regional School District School Committee um, for the 11th. Can I get a motion to enter into the meeting? So moved. Okay. Can I get a show of hands to enter into the meeting? Aaron, let the record show the motion passes 600. Sure, my phone is muted. So okay. Weird ding dongs. Uh, can I get everybody to stand, please, for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That's me. Hand it off. Sorry. Okay, so I'm the only one that has even a remote excuse being only an American citizen for two years. That's all right. Everybody else has no excuse. You know more about our number yeah, than well, the rest of us. Yeah, civics, maybe we, we could go I'll over that. Um, yeah. You what? You're going you're gonna to beat me on okay. that. There we go. Let's see, opening ceremony. We've got a consent agenda tonight. We have minutes from last meeting. And we have a fundraiser. And we have the student, oh, for the student council car wash. Um, anybody got any questions on that before we get to the motion later? Okay, Lawrence, we've got contracts that I need everybody to sign. There's three of them. And then there's the um, the warrants that are in the bucket. If you guys can take care of that, that would be fantastic. Superintendent Willard, do we have any correspondence tonight? I do not. There we go. Public comment. We have nobody here except for us. So that's going to negate anybody public comment. Um, all right. All right. You're up, man. <laughs> Student advisory report. All righty. Well, first of all, the SRS talent show has been canceled due to a low sign up count. I think there was only like five acts. So the Powder Mill talent show is still on, though, and will take place on May 5th, the same day as our talent show was on. <laughs> I'm not sure how that got planned. I suppose they wanted me. The SRS Connections Group presented to eighth grade classes last Friday. The lesson taught to the students was on microaggressions and stereotypes. The SRS Spring Concert is next Thursday, May 11th, and will feature performances from the SRS Band, Chorus, and Rock Band. And now I need to pull Marissa's email because I still don't know anything about sports. <laughs> there is a fundraiser at the baseball game Friday at Wally Park for the RG26 Foundation. Students are $3 to get in and adults are $5. I'm the DJ, by the way. All right. All righty. Any two? Just come see. <laughs> JV is at four and varsity is at 7.15. And volleyball also has a game today against Belcher Town. All right. All righty. Awesome. Great job. Thank you. Okay. Uh, educational presentation. I am up. So we are at our point of the year. Um, where we do our public discussion, end of assessment for our illustrious superintendent, Ms. Willard. Um, so over the last week or so, every all the school committee members filled out an assessment. Uh, one of my duties is to sort of put that all together in an analysis that we can present at this meeting. I am not going to go and read everything verbatim that's on there. Um, all of this information is going to be um, available to the public. Um, every one of you received this before the weekend, so hopefully you've got a chance to take a look at this. The superintendent has already had um, this, so I'm just going to really kind of go over some bullet points and some highlights of this. Um, the superintendent had five goals this year. Um, so goal number one, um, we were looking at uh, working collaboratively with the administrators um, about the science of reading. Um, basically, in a nutshell, we feel that she did a fantastic job. We've got five that indicated that she met her goals. One exceeded the goal. Um, we had another, uh, the second goal, we had a professional practice goal. Um, again, we had, oh, sorry, we had one significant progress on the last one. I, there's always gonna be seven here. Um, the professional practice goal, um, we wanted to look about uh, meaningful, actual, measurable percent professional practice goals around using data in real time and how to use that data to support the student learning. Um, so we had, Six, it indicated that she met the goal. One had exceeded it. Uh, we've got goal number three. Um, you're going to sense a trend here. 
Um, we're looking at uh, dealing with strategic plan, core values, and mission statement, updating that as necessary. Um, in this goal, we've got three that met and four that exceeded. Uh, the district improvement goal, number four, uh, we were looking at the reform law. We were updating our policies. Uh, we've got a little bit more variation here. And I think part of the issue with that is that it, it's difficult to indicate. I know I certainly put down some progress, and that's just because we've only really gone through the like four of them. Um, I don't think it's in a, it, it's inaccurate, but yet what we've done has certainly been very productive and effective. So I can certainly understand why we've got one, two significant progress, three met, and one exceeded. It depends on how you define that. Um, and then for the fifth goal, we're looking at really going out, and this is, I believe. Uh, I'm sure the families is where we went out and asked if you did your survey or we, yeah, yeah went out to the community. Family right. So in there, we've got one with some progress, five that have met and one that have exceeded. So that's really the, the global looks. Then it kind of gets a little bit tighter where it looks at the standards, um, where we go over the assessment, the evaluation for standard one. Um, all of these, we, we've got basically everything is coming up proficient and exemplary. Um, at the end of this standard one, and how this breaks out, guys, just so that everybody, we've got, there's different sections that we're assessing, obviously. In this first one, we've got one C, we've got one D, we've got one E. And then that all goes together into an overall assessment. Um, sometimes these numbers look a little funky because you get one that said uh, that was proficient in one, exemplary in the other, and then they flip-flop. So you kind of have to put it together. As we get through a couple of these, I had to make some adjustments because in the in the assessment section, we had a couple times where, where somebody put um, proficient, but yet in the overall rating, and there was only one rating, they put exemplary. You can't, you, you gotta have the same in that. In, they're either both proficient or they're both exemplary. So what I did just to be, Sort of fair is that whatever that one was in the assessment, I moved it into the overall. Um, but in here, we had the instructional leadership for one, we have the assessment, we have the evaluation, we had data informed decision making, um, and then we have an overall rating of three proficient, four exemplary. There are um, comments here, and what I did is everyone that had a, a comment got pulled into this summary, so it's on there. Um, I didn't necessarily identify who made what comment. Um, again, if there's somebody out there that wants to see the individual assessments that we as, as uh, school committee members do, they can certainly request that. It's not, uh, we're not trying to be, uh, we're not trying to hide anything here. Everything from a transparent perspective, all the comments are on there. Um, again, there's lots of positives here, Superintendent Willard. Um, on to standard two, this one we only had one section to look at. So it all kind of goes in together. So we got law, ethics, and policies. Um, it's, again, we had five proficient, two exemplary. Um, I just, at this point on the budget side of this, because it does come in here. Again, I do want to point out and really commend you um, for jumping in without any sort of hesitation um, to get this budget ready, prepared, um, in as much detail as you were able to do. Um, I commend you for bringing in Mr. Tamal into that process. I'm glad he was willing and able to do that as well. Um, I know you and I have talked about this, that I think this was a good opportunity for you to get under the hood and see exactly where all that, all those finances were. I mean, the one thing about having Steve Presnell is that he was on top of everything and knew where every little dime was, um, which made it easy for you from your position to kind of, you knew what was coming was, was was accurate and trusting. So you didn't necessarily have to dig in as much as you certainly did this year to make sure you knew where everything was. Correct. Um, so I think that was a good, it was a good awesome. learning opportunity for you. Um, but all I think it does is it makes you a stronger leader because now you know that budget from the front to the back in, in a lot more detail than you certainly did two months ago. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> Well, and the other thing is, and I, I couldn't figure out a way to word it when I wrote her evaluation, but on multiple occasions during that front process, um, I heard her say, well, and I'm actually enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> 
which was really cool because you know like to to learn and grow and enjoy all at the same time it's, it's just pretty awesome I, I i agree i mean test driving a car is great but understanding how the car uh is built i think is more important i think i think it worked out for the right reasons yeah. you know everything that uh so you went down in the last five, six months. I think, at, you, you know, collectively, it, it's for the betterment of the, the district. And yeah. I commend both of you for you. all the hard work and the effort. And uh, you guys didn't quit. So thank you. All right. Actually, <laughs> we're, we're going to talk about the results of that a little later. <laughs> you you approve the budget, the uh, one of the contract weekend. <laughs> Holidays. Yeah, no, no. All good. Anybody got anything else? Okay. So number three, um, again, this was just there was one section that was part of her goal, but made it real simple. Um, we got five proficient, two exemplary. Um, we've got the information in here, uh, the family and community engagement. I know we certainly heard from Superintendent Willard how beneficial and how helpful those listening sessions were. Um, the information that she got and is going to be able to sort of implement and integrate into our, our programs, I think is, is going to be invaluable. Um, again, all the comments that all the uh, school committee members made are there. Uh, the professional culture, there were two standards that we were looking at. Um, so we've got um, a commitment to high standards, cultural proficiency, the overall rating we came in at six proficient, one exemplary. Um, again, this was one of the ones, actually it, it's, we had one evaluator give an exemplary and a proficient and same thing with another. So the overall, they had it down at proficient. So that's why it's in there. Nothing nothing needs improvement, nothing unsatisfactory. Proficient um, is the benchmark. So yeah. that's yeah. why I always say Absolutely. proficient is the benchmark. First yeah. three letters are. Some people think <laughs> it's the top. Oh, yeah. I, do, I do want to move this because I, I do like it. You're just shy of being exemplary, <laughs> um, but, you're, but you're leading the charge. Um, so the one thing, and I, and I certainly put this in my comment in this section, I know last year we talked about under this sort of realm about the quality and timing of the communication mm -hmm. to the parents from the district. I think we've made some great strides um, in that. I think that's, look, it's, it's a credit to you talking to the administrators, letting them know from our perspective what we're concerned mm -hmm. about, working as a team, getting those notices out in a timely manner, giving the parents the information. I certainly think that there's room to grow and there's other things that we've already talked about that I think would even help that more. I think nowadays with all the challenges and the and the concerns that, that parents and everybody have it out there about school districts, the more transparent that we can be, the better off we're gonna be. Um, but that, that's been a great, I wanted to make sure I pointed that out because I know last year I pointed out I was concerned. Um, so I wanted to let you know that that it's certainly evident the work that put in this year. And I think we've certainly moved forward in, 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 in the right direction. Um, I do, and, and one of our other school did bring this up and I know we talked about it earlier. I certainly also would like to have the anti-defamation um, training that, we, that the teachers were exposed to. If that's something that we can set up for us, I think that would be fantastic. I thought you mentioned that we were trying to do it as a workshop over the summer. Oh, okay. We, okay. So that's where I kind of put it because with everything going on at school committee this year with all the turnover and everything else, I thought Jenny's working with them to figure out when we're going to have the okay. um, school committee retreat. Yep. And we could do like a workshop session oh. with them for that. Sounds good. So before the school year even starts. Was, yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. remember. I think that's fantastic. Okay, good. Yeah, we didn't. I don't think it was put in here as a as a hey. No, you no. forgot. I think it was a hey. Look, we're still interested to try to do this. Um, okay, so now it goes into sort of assess the progress towards the goals, and and sometimes I think some of this is a little redundant. I, yeah, I didn't get how this was different from the first set of that we did. Are these is, is this the because we did? I I went back and looked. We did the exact same questions last year. So it's in there. It's in the assessment. It wouldn't be the first time I've ever seen a formalized assessment that was somewhat redundant. I did um, one today. <laughs> okay. So it's, it's the nice thing is, is that what I always worry about when I see something like this, 
we've done on my other life is that you get completely different, different answers. answers. We did, so that was good. Right. So at least, at least from that end, we as a group were consistent in our evaluation of the system. It was just confusing well. while completing it. Absolutely. You know, yeah. like, wait a minute, did I really okay. do this? Yeah. So I'm not going to go over every one of these. There were a couple, some progress or a couple. I mean, it, it's you went all over those. Um, then we've got the performance on the standard. And I just put the definitions on satisfactory, but needs improvement, proficient, exemplary. You're proficient or exemplary in all okay. of them. Um, and then we've got the, the end comments. Um, I, I think it's fair to say from an assessment that the members of the school committee are extremely happy with your job performance um, in that role. Um, I know we've talked about this before, but I have thoroughly enjoyed um, our many meetings that we have on a bi-weekly bi manner, um, going over the policies, going over the agenda, going over any sort of concerns that pop up. Um, I think we certainly, as we've said, we come at a lot of these in two different directions, mm -hmm. but I am always astounded and, and, and happy how many of them we actually agree on. Um, so it's, it's, it's been a, a thoroughly enjoyable um, year being in the, the chair role and interacting with you and it yeah, was yeah. actually very enjoyable to do this assessment. What? What's the change? What's the change? Change doing a good job. So you want to tell people they're doing a good job when you have a I have my name. I agree. You're, he's just, you know, just Pat, Pat, you. Pat, would, would you like to turn in and get her, let her know how you feel? Because I don't want to. Like, You've said it already. Okay, you did. I echo everything. My job is to assess and and and, and summarize all of your. I can have fun, you know. I hear <laughs> expensive. <and, laughs> I don't know what it is, but that's a, a theme everywhere. I, I will say, I think, I think, where I go, I'm always, I, you know, I, I'm a they always make fun. Fun. but I'm serious when I, I need to be. But I think this group as a whole is pretty unique and pretty special. And I will hey, say, it's like, Hamptons, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, we're, we're live. <laughs> it, aside from there, like it's everywhere. You know, I read the paper and Google and yeah, daily just to kind of compare us yeah. to other parts of the state, but really the nation. And I can say, I think you know, this district is pretty unique, and um, I don't think anybody here is afraid to like speak their mind and then not afraid to iron it out. Um, amongst the team, I think that's something that moving forward, we just keep the mojo. I mean, it's, I think it's, I'm proud to say I am a member of this committee and uh, yeah. you know, hope everybody can say the same. Yeah. So, um, you did a great job on a, on a, on a school grade. I think we probably give you a solid A. Um, <laughs> that kind of kid at school. <laughs> So comments, I mean, I'm going to open the floor to you. It was a very challenging year. I appreciate the support um, that I've received this year from the school committee. I wouldn't have made it through this um, year without you as a school committee. I um, There were times when you just had to trust me um, with blind faith, and I appreciated that. And um, no, I will always act with integrity. I will always put the school district first and um, tell you as much as I possibly can and um, know that school safety and our students are always going to be my top priority and um, know that when I do make a decision, even if you don't know everything behind it for the law, just know that I always go back to our core values, which is how I operated. Uh, during COVID, I just kind of went back to what our core values were and um, based my decision making off of that. So um, it has been a year. I thought COVID was tough, um, I, but I have to also say I couldn't have made it throughout this year if I didn't have the team of administrators that I work with. Um, we are down two administrators in the district right now. We, do, we are not top heavy at all. Um, between uh, Joe Tremel stepping into this role when I needed him, Serena Shorter stepping into Woodland and then at the regional school, um, Aaron Carrier 
not only being the principal here, but taking on the educational leadership over at Woodland School. Uh, Robin Gunn, um, both being the director of special ed and running the day-to-day -day at Woodland School, plus um, uh, Lisa Busquette and uh, Jessica Cody, who really held the business department together uh, during the transition. They were very much behind the scenes, mm -hmm. but I have to tell you, um, they are exemplary. And the stuff that the public do doesn't see, the stuff that the teachers don't see, um, the fact that I, Lisa, when they had to do the five week that she was doing the retro for the teacher's contract, she was here to eight o'clock on a Friday night by herself and then worked all day on Saturday to make sure that the teacher's pay was ready to go with their retro. Um, those are the things that people don't see behind the scenes that really make our district special. And um, I don't think they always get enough credit because they're never on the front line and they're not on the TV. Um, but um, I, I have to tell you, um, Joe will tell you every day, they're two brilliant women um, who really um, have stepped up um, and shown a lot of leadership in our business office um, recently. So I just want to commend them personally to the public because mm -hmm. they don't get any recognition ever. So And Emma had a challenging year as, as the first yep, year. Yeah, first year. She had a lot of building responsibility yeah. here. And yeah, it's just, and we've had a lot of Title IX investigations. So Jenny Sullivan's been, been consumed with Title IX the top of, it's just been a year. <laughs> it's just been a year. So I just want to thank the admin team that I work with, you guys, as I tell you all the time. All right. You're pretty amazing. Anybody have anything else before we move on? Your job is good. Yes, sir. I just want you. I don't want you to get left out. I'll let you know. Okay. All right. Uh, action items. You got one, and then I got one. Yes. Easy. <laughs> Move to approve the consent agenda as listed. Recommended. So moved. All right. Can I can I get a show of hands to accept the consent agenda? Aaron, let the record show the motion passes seven or sorry, yes, seven zero zero. No. And I'm gonna have I'm gonna read this one because I think it's a little little difficult for the superintendent to do this, but move to accept the agreement between the South McConnell Granville Regional School Committee and Superintendent of Schools Jennifer Willard for the period of July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2028. Recommended. So moved. Second. All right, just to remind everybody and, and, and the people that are listening on, I, I actually was through this whole challenge that we were running in from the, from the uh, business office side, um, Superintendent Willard approached me and said, look, um, I'm looking to stay on another five years. I would really like to finish my career here at the district. Um, is there a way that the school committee could look at and just extend or put on a five-year contract. We're legally allowed to do that. Um, obviously, we discussed this as a group um, with all of the challenges that some districts are having with finding superintendents. Um, I thought that this was a no-brainer. Everybody agreed with us. Um, so what we've done is we essentially, this is the exact same contract that we approved last year, other than we've, we've moved it up to where it starts in Jan June 1 of this year, all the way to 2028, uh, we kept the same 3% increase, no changes to um, sick time, vacation time, the longevity bonus we had already agreed to and put into the contract last time. So that's already set and ready to go. Um, this basically just indicates that it supersedes the current contract that was in effect between the parties. It's going to go into effect in June 1, and we've locked in our superintendent. Um, so does anybody have any comments, questions, concerns? Okay, can I get a show of hands to accept the uh, motion? Aaron, let the record show the motion passes to 700. What did he do, mate? Oh. Kind of hesitate over there? No, oh. Pam was like jumping out of her phone. Oh. Okay. <laughs> let the record show it's seven, it's six zero zero with one really, really excited member. <laughs> <laughs> they we'll always have like a different category for that one. <laughs> All right, so. What's the record? Go back to page. What's the record? 28? 27. Oh, 27. Oh, 27. Oh, please say we're never going to beat it. We're close. <laughs> All right. You Superintendent. I know. <laughs> say it. A little verbose. I'm sorry. 
Okay, Superintendent Willie, do you have a report for us? I'm super quick. Um, I, I think I shared a little bit last time. I couldn't remember. I told you that the house budget was coming out. I just want to let you know that the house budget did come out, and I just want to remind the public and everybody here. And um, I cc'd uh, Chairman Stevenson on an email I sent to Representative Boldiga um, to make sure that when it was in the house, that they maintain the per pupil went from $30 a student to $60 a student. The house went up to $60. Um, so now we have to make sure when it goes into the Senate that we advocate, um, I think it was Paul Mark. Paul Mark. Paul Mark. He's our new um, senator. So I'm going to send an email to him, similar to what I said to Representative Boldiga, about making sure that we keep it at 60. I'd even love to see it at 100 per pupil. Um, that they do put a uh, hundred million dollars um, in for extraordinary relief because of the 14 percent special ed cost for next year. Um, right now, they're doing it at a 10 percent um, mark. It's still up in the air how the, the a final language is going to come up, but it, we may get some additional money to help offset the increase to our special ed out of district tuitions. The exciting, exciting, exciting one is regional transportation for the first time in Navy in history was um, funded at 100%. That is a huge impact on our districts, a huge impact. If you look at the cherry sheet, when the cherry sheet came out, it was like 723. I upped it to 800 with my fingers crossed. If it stays at 100, it, it can go up to like a little over 900,000. So that helps us tremendously. The other one was, and I thought I heard it correctly, uh, 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 Director of Finance and Operations, uh, Mr. Jamal and I were both on a webinar, and there's two bills that are out there right now. One is, I believe that they're trying to say Section 15, they want to make um, school free lunch. lunches free, and then they want to eliminate the language Section 17 that makes school districts go after families who will have unpaid food um, balances. So they're really pushing for this universal free lunch to just become, I don't know if it's law or what it is, but that Normal came practice. up in the meeting. And, and then the rural school aid, again, um, they had it at 7.5 million in the governor's budget. Um, in the, uh, the house budget, it went up to 10 million. Um, so that has another direct impact on um, our regional school district. Um, I did fill out a survey today saying that this is all great, but by the time we have to build our budgets, and I understand it's the political game, the governor is going to come in, the House wants to make it look like they're doing a little something for the voting constituents, then the Senate's going to come in, they're going to do something a little bit more for the voting constituents, and then we get our final budget. I get all of that, but it makes it very difficult for a lot of the regional school districts who don't operate like a municipality whose budgets don't have to be done until June 30th, they can kind of wait for the state budget to come out to finalize it. We can't. So it, it's kind of like a guessing game. We do it the best that we can, which is why I felt a little comfortable upping the transportation with fingers crossed um, in previous years. Um, but so that's where we are right now with the House budget, and it is now going to the Senate, and it's they are going to have it out by next Friday. Mm -hmm. Next Friday, they hope to have the um, next budget out. So, so will this um, impact in for town meeting? Will you be changing any numbers for town meeting, or we just don't? We can't yet. You, we can't at all yeah. because we've already proved it. it. We've already proved it one and mm -hmm. two. This is just theirs. This could go to the um, Senate, and the Senate's like, nah, we don't want to do 60. We're going to go back down to 30. Right. You may have funded it at 100%. We're going down. So these aren't definitive numbers right now. Nothing is definitive until the governor's budget is signed in July. Okay. So it, just, so it keeps just going through all these changes, and it's, it's just really hard for regional school districts because we have to have our budgets done so early. So... The nice thing will be is that let's say, for argument's sake, we get an extra two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's fine. It's it all it will do is it will go in E and D, mm -hmm. and therefore next year we'll have two hundred fifty thousand dollars extra in E and D that we would that we didn't think we were going to have, which will allow us to offset cost of the town next year. So any sort of adjustments to the positive or negative 
that we get compared to what we've locked in and what we've approved from a school committee perspective and what actually happens is going to get adjusted in the E and D value. So the towns will always get yes. a negative or a positive to that the following year. Mm -hmm. So it won't affect anybody's assessment for this no, year. No, not for this year, nope. but it will, but it will affect next year. And we've mm -hmm. got, I mean, even Jenny's presentation that she gave last meeting or the meeting before about the grants, if mm -hmm. there's an extra hundred or some thousand that we get from that, that we that we can offset some of those teachers, teachers' salary that are right now in ESER three. That extra money will go. It'll end up ending up in E and D. So it's it that's all good stuff because I mean that's where and if we manage the budget well, any extra goes into that E and D, and that's why we've been able to consistently year over year put in eight to nine hundred thousand dollars in there to offset that cost to the towns. Right. Oh, and this extraordinary relief, I believe, is really going to districts that are in a hold harmless. Um, mm -hmm. Well, that would make sense. Right. Because we don't have any rights. Mm -hmm. So, right. thank your representatives. Mr. Tremel. We had a meeting with uh, Mr. Amato around the athletic master plan, and he gave us some homework to do, um, you know, programmatic questionnaire that I think you need some some help on um, from members of the committee, maybe park and rack a little bit as well. Okay. Take a look at how we use the fields, how often we use the fields, who uses the fields, um, charges, fees, things okay. of that nature. So we had a good meeting a month ago, early April. Mr. Wycannon provided him with all the, the schematics and the oversights of here and two wall the wall of the park so okay. he has everything he needs um so this information will be helpful for him in his report anything else no. fingers crossed for next week yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well two yeah. two and then the week after we got another one okay uh fantastic subcommittees negotiations we got nothing right finance we'll know more next week <laughs> Um, LP back. Oh, lots of stuff going on. They hired that. They hired a. They hired a no, 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 not even at that place in time yet. There's like five thousand steps we have to go through before we get this. <laughs> um, but the teachers, I think I mentioned the teachers unionized <laughs> over there, and now negotiations are happening. <laughs> um, <laughs> they were non. They were. They weren't unionized. Wow. But <laughs> Roland is kind of. Clustered with them because they came back in their first negotiations with an 888 increase. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to understand that it's hard in that school because a lot of their teachers don't have degrees at all, not even bachelor's degrees. The teachers that run the um, culinary or, you know, some of them have certifications, but it's hard to give them steps because they don't have like a master's degree plus 30 or a bachelor's degree you know plus whatever so that makes it less quantitative and, qualitative. That's tough. <laughs> and now it's hard for them because they're unionized so now the teachers are paying more in dues than what they're going to get in increases on yeah, that, probably, that probably would have been something to think about yeah. before you vote yeah. again yeah so they're they're in a place over there, but the school buses will be leaving Woodland parking lot the last day of school. <laughs> they don't know where they're going to put them, but they said we'll park them in the parking lot at CTEC. So. <laughs> and the reason why they want them out of there is because of the in ground gas tank that's over there. They don't want to have anything to do with that. Now, can I ask? We recently, over April vacation, I believe, received letters about bus route changes. Mm -hmm um what was the reason for that or is it a driver shortage yes they have no drivers um they did lp back did purchase 28 of the chargers for the new electric buses that are coming um we're not getting any of them i think they got 10 of them and they're putting them in the bigger cities um they did so we bought electric chargers for buses that we're now not getting. Well, no, this district is getting the LPB is not oh, okay. is not right. getting. Wait, wait. Can you imagine an electric bus in Holland or Granville or Saturday? But but the chargers <laughs> they, that they, they did, yeah, <laughs> maybe they'll go down. No, down, down really fast. Fast. 
Um, well, they're recharging on them. It's down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's true. The, 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 the they're really heavy. They're like they're like thirty three thousand pounds or something like that. They're really heavy. We should have solar on them. <laughs> Erica, does they talk to you about Charge. that? Yeah, about the electricity. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So they the chargers that they bought are actually I think it's called GME. So or E and B. Some, it's two letters. I don't remember what it is. But um, while the buses are plugged in during the summer, they're actually charging the chargers. And so I'm sorry, the chargers are. The electricity that's in the bus is just um, sitting there. So they're actually going to pull it out of the chargers and sell it back mm -hmm. to yeah. um, the electric company. So that's actually going to be, and that cost that is offset will actually come back to the districts too. So. Where are those electric chargers, charging stations, and buses housed? In which of their uh, garages? Uh, I don't remember. It's the bigger ones. It's like, let, no, it's. West Springfield, um, Wilbraham, uh, Agawam, yeah, yeah. Um, I can't remember. I think that's it. Isn't it yeah, three, no? yeah. Now West Springfield, Agawam. You Florida. said that this the Southwood buses are going to be moved out of Woodland. Are they still keeping the Granville and Tallinn buses up where? Yes. Yeah. yeah. The park. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're just going to be legitimately parked. Because the, the, the place in Aguam isn't ready yet, okay. um, but they just want them out of there because I think we had like a three year thing. And yeah, 100% of them. Yeah. Goes wrong with them. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why they want them out of there because of that gas tank. That's so this is an Indiana cold spike move. Yeah. Right? They're all for cold mm -hmm. speed. They're getting them out. Yeah. That's the one night. The great big line of buses are all going to go. But uh, we actually are just back in person now, so this is the first time that I actually got to meet everybody else on the on the board. And I actually went to Sea Tech, and each one of the um, I had dinner there, and it was so good. Yeah, and each one of the um, uh, shops came. The the teachers and some students came in, and they did like a little. It was awesome. That's always cool. They do that, and yeah, that's really cool. It they was really they cool. Returned yeah. to it after COVID. Finally. Um, but it was weird to see everybody in person. I'm like, oh, you're tall. <laughs> and you're thin. <laughs> All right. I've got nothing on the corporation. I'm assuming we'll have a meeting here soon. Um, policy, we are, when's our next meeting? 20, 20 it was something at May, right? We moved but then it? I think it got moved to the 523. Is that four, I'm assuming? If we're doing. E and F, B, yep. E and F, right? Yep. So we need, Aaron, can we please at the next meeting, can we please have section E and F of the policy sent out to the sub the uh, school committee members for like the first reading? Okay, awesome. Thank you. And I believe that meeting is also on the 23rd. I believe our next school committee yes, meeting is, is also yeah. on the 23rd as well yep. as that policy sub. Yep. And is that a reorg meeting? Yes. Okay. Yep. It's a big meeting. Who's up this year? What do you mean? Eric and Ryan oh, are running okay. unopposed, so I'm assuming we're not going to have any changes. So, <laughs> but I oh, hope next week, the ninth. Or you can, or you can, you can start. Now. You can start vo at voting at yesterday. Okay. Just don't do what I did and not fill out your name on the thing because I got a call late in the evening saying you forgot to fill out the outside sheet, so my my vote is now invalid. So I have to oh. go back. Oh. Now my 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 eighteen year old who's first time voting she filled it out right <laughs> I didn't um, but my name and her name are right next to each other but my name's underneath hers so I bet you everybody's gonna vote for you and no no it says vote, vote twice I know but I didn't even notice that. all you need is one that's vote. what happened to Jonathan I I got Why I, was below one you know, right? yeah, yeah I mean, I did yeah. by like four hundred and three votes. <laughs> Because people didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So I might not even be on the school board after this. <laughs> for you. So I'm going to vote for you. So you, Thank you. Come on. So all you need is one. Um, all right, <laughs> buildings and grounds. When are we when are we gonna have another meeting? We should do we should have one soon to do this. Okay. All right. How did you the last meeting go? That, that, was, that was good. I didn't make it. Yeah, it was in my well. Just that he summarized. That's what that's yeah. what we did. Yeah, we went did over. Did we that. schedule another one after that? 
No. No. So Aaron's going to work on locking us in with the meeting. Great. Awesome. Um, IOT. Yes. Wellness. 16. Okay. Sped. She's do, busy. do you have all the answers for all the other ones? <laughs> No. Technology. You're not on that. No. Nothing. Uh, capital, Mr. Job, you got anything on your two capital committee master plan? The capital is done, and we'll know about that. Two weeks. Okay. Uh, master plan. We meet I think next Thursday. Okay. Athletics. We've got October. We're waiting. We're looking at obviously this thing here with mm -hmm. the with the committee. Uh, we've got some coaches that we're looking to try to hire. Um, anything else, Mr. Trial, that I forgot? Um, trying to think last time we met with Marion. One thing we we've identified, we don't know the solution yet. We want to try and figure out from a payment perspective how the kids will be paying their money, right? Yes. We think that that needs to get looked at. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. So <laughs> sure. we're on it. Well, I, ideally, I think if we could have like a school Venmo or something like that would be great. That way they there could just... There definitely needs to be a better communication system about that as well, because it's pretty haphazard right now with regard to uh, who's in charge of that, yeah. who's communicating with the kids, who's collecting the money, all of that. I know when um, my kids played in Westfield, I would have to give the checks to the athletic director. We didn't give them to the coaches. The athletic director collected all the money, but they also have a full time clerical staff in Westfield who um, took care of everything and organized everything. So, right, it's it's a much bigger school, so it had right. more supports. But we coaches did not touch money. We were identifying an issue that we need to address. So, good news is they know about it and they're on it. Mm -hmm. Uh, legislative, nothing other than I believe there is a summer program. I don't know the date. Um, I went to it last summer. I thought it was very interesting. I would certainly be interested in going again. Um, but somebody else can certainly go to the, I think it's nice if everybody at some point does go to that November meeting. Um, we can rotate through that one, but it is, it is, it's interesting to go. Um, all right. Public comment, there's no, still nobody here. So we're through that. Um, old business, new business. I will at this point, well, I'm close, Pam. We're only 15 minutes off. All right, not um, yet, not can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. I get a show of hands to accept that motion. Aaron, let the record show the motion passes 700. Everybody have a fantastic evening. Good night. Thank you. I got a Christmas party. It's pretty much